Hello, I am Izzy Holtz Campbell, uh, as previously stated, and this is my talk about collaborative uh, governance in game art communities. Uh, first off, I have to give a shout out to this little uh, lucky dinosaur that Tony Pizza just gave me, so it's gonna just sit here and be like supportive to my presentation. Um, so I'm one of the directors at DMG. Uh, we're a group based out of Toronto, Dames Making Games, yes. Um, Jenny is also one of the directors, so she's like another mind behind all of the content in this uh, presentation. So this is uh, DMG. This is a kind of our little mission statement. That is really big, Pat. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Um, so we are a non-for-profit in Toronto, um, and we uh, are member-run and really member-focused as an organization. Um, and we have about 220 local members, um, about 14,000 international. Um, this means that people sort of internationally are supporting us primarily financially um, and just being like, you're doing cool work, way to go. Um, and we really believe that game making can be an act of resistance. Um, and we're here to support uh, game makers or people who are just interested in making a game for the first time. Um, and so we just really want to uh, expand the diversity of games and then also give anyone a chance to make one if they're like, I've heard about this DIY game thing. What, what's that about? Uh, so these are kind of just some of the things we do. Uh, we run game jams, workshops, uh, four-week programs. Currently, we're working on the second Indigicade, which is in, uh, for Indigenous women in Toronto, uh, which is a collaboration with Indigenous Roots. So four weeks taking people who have never made a game through workshops and mentoring sessions uh, right from beginning to the end having a fully functioning prototype. Um, but as well, we, like, we play a lot of games, we have some arcade exhibitions, um, we have g dames playing games where we honestly just get together as a community and like pull out some board games. <laughs> um, and then also we support the work that is coming out of our community. Uh, speaker socials, we get sort of three to five women every month to come in and chat about what they're working on, what they're doing. Um, it's a really uh, supportive space and a really great way to get a little uh, confidence in speaking. Uh, and then also just like get your game out there, get some feedback on what you're doing. Um, then we have also our tool development. Um, so we've worked on a game engine called IV. Um, and just sort of seeing places where our community would like a tool and then maybe being able to support and make that for them. Um, and then sort of what this talk is about is around our community policy and governance, which we are currently working on. But before I kind of get deep into that, um, this is me. This is where I put up a bunch of words of things that I do um, and also kind of explain that I'm like not specifically a, a game maker. Uh, but I came to Toronto three years ago and sort of checked out all of the various media arts communities in Toronto, which is like hugely expansive. Um, and I was like, I just want to make like weird interactive digital stuff with uh, new technology. And DMG was really a community that like supported me in doing that, even though I was like, I kind of like electronics and make wearable art. And they were like, sure, come on, hang out, make some games. Um, so that's sort of how I came to DMG is really through this idea of um, as sort of, well, for me, it was like, I've, I'm a fine artist. So it was this idea of um, sort of interdisciplinary uh, art that I was making. Um, and now DMG is working on something that's kind of been in the works for like the entire life of DMG. Uh, it's just this documentation of how as a community we sort of function. Um, in particular, in the first couple years of DMG, uh, kind of before my time actually, uh, we were totally member funded and so that as much as it kind of like we have no funding it also gives you a lot of space to play and try things and sort of iterate on what's working what's not and also really be like members you're funding us what do we need to do what should we be making for you um, and be super focused in um, shaping this community around the people in Toronto and what they needed. Uh, so this community development kit is just kind of a documentation of what we do, how we do it, um, but then it also functions as a document that other people can use to potentially start a group uh, similar to DMG, uh, but then also enables us to sort of collaborate with new groups that are starting, um, and then also have them sort of feed into what this development toolkit is um, and all of our sort of governance policies. So. 
these are just kind of three things uh, that the Com Dev Kit is sort of aimed at doing, replicating the beautiful magic you see in this photo behind of DMG, um, making this community governance policy um, as inclusive uh, as it can be, and also recognizing that that inclusivity is always being worked on. Um, and so by opening up this uh, to other people, we are not only making a community that's inclusive to the people and participants in Toronto, and we aren't sort of going to somewhere else and being like, hey, DMG works for us. It's totally gonna work for you. Here's like what DMG is. It gives people in other places the sort of agency to be like, oh, DMG's cool. Here's sort of how they do it. Um, we can have that starting block because we've done it, we've stumbled, we've fallen, we've uh, iterated on our uh, design of our community, and then you know we've moved on, um, and then you're not sort of starting from zero. Um, and then also creating this opportunity for not only our community to have sort of all of these policies, but also us be connected to these other communities that might pop up or want to change and use our um, toolkit. So there's kind of three main things. There's Gabby. Gabby's like, my face is way too big right now. Uh, so this is actually the aforementioned Bit Bazaar in the last talk. Um, so we sort of have this uh, place, policy, and people. These are sort of three main um, categories of things that we talk about in the community development kit. Um, at DMG, we really, uh, we're really dedicated to having a space um, not only online, because there's so many games communities online, you can learn so much online. Half the time in our like uh, mentor sessions and things, really we're just being like, you can go online and do this. Um, but having that space that people can come to uh, really gives you just like people to talk to when you're like pulling your hair out in your basement, you're like can't figure out that one bug. Or if you just aren't really certain how to come at this, like we have a lot of artists that are kind of don't really play games, they've just heard about this sort of interactive uh, medium that is a possibility, and they've been like, oh, I hear there's all these DIY tools out there that I could possibly use. Um, and a lot of people come to us and are like, I'm a, a, an illustrator, but I don't program, I can't make a game. And so, you know, if you just wanna do illustration, there are things out there that we can kind of point you towards and, you know, take a little bit of that stumbling to figure out exactly what that person wants to do. So our policy, um, our policy is at all of our events, at any time we're meeting in our space, um, it's always on the wall, it's visible. Um, there's always like, if, if, if you experience this, you can do this. And so it kind of leaves people not being like, oh, well, that happened and it was against the policy. Nah. Um, there's always someone to contact and there's always multiple people to contact and it will always be confidential. Um, so then the sort of third part that I hinted at before is it's like always revisited. We're constantly, just not like once a year, we kind of sit down and we're like, should we change anything? Like what's happened? Um, what can we improve on? Because again, it's always that sort of fluidity in like what our community needs, what people, how we can include more people, how we can be more uh, inclusive, more diverse, um, and just making sure that work isn't something that we just wrote in stone and then like left on the wall and it's like dusty and nobody ever looks at it. And then also our people. So again, member run, um, super member focused. Uh, and there's also sort of this bottom up structure at DMG where like you can sort of come in, you can take workshops, you can learn how to make a game. If that's all you wanna do, awesome, amazing. We have more people, more games, more stuff happening and we're totally happy with that. But if you're like, for example, I was a member and I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I love this community, I really wanna support it. Um, you can kind of start getting involved with com committees. We've got our programming committee, our kind of PR committee, um, conflict resolution. There's so many different ways that you can get involved um, and sort of dig into how the community structures a little bit more um, just through the committees. And then sort of from the committees, uh, we also have our board and uh, we're a working board. Um, and so it's, it's kind of this flow of things from communities to leadership. So people who are on the board are involved in the community. We know who people are. We're not just a bunch of like white dudes in suits being like, this is how you should be inclusive in video games. Uh, <laughs> I know we all laugh because we know it's true. <laughs> but again, I like sort of wanted to talk about this opportunities uh, in 
inter-community collaboration. Because I feel like, especially from my background, this is like really one of the core things that I think makes TMG so special. And also is one of the great um, possibilities with this uh, community development kit. Is that we get people all the time who are like, we want a DMG, what's happening? Like, how can we do this? And this is a tool that we can kind of give those people and then create that dialogue. Um, and so really just like adding more voices to our policy makes it intrinsically more diverse. <laughs> Um, and so it's really about this like cross pollinating of ideas, um, figuring out like we're not all just gamers, like we have artists, we have writers, we have like so many different people. Um, and so just like I'm a huge uh, advocate for like if you're working in a field and you only talk to people in that field, you're probably like not making the most uh, interesting work because it's probably only for people in your field. Um, and like in particular coming out of art, you know, it's like we've we've made art and then we've made art about art. And you know, if you only hang out with artists, you're probably never gonna get out of that like art about other people's art. Um, and so then also, you know, if we're collaborating with other communities, uh, the toolkit will evolve and improve. Um, and then it also sort of uh, acts as this documentation. Um, of not only the process of sort of creating these communities, uh, but also the process of governing and sustaining these communities. Um, and so one of the things that we're going to do with this toolkit is um, put it on GitHub inevitably, uh, and then people can fork all of our policies, and we actually have a way of tracking um, how this has changed, how it's worked for other communities, and we're uh, sort of all connected and not just like these little communities off not talking to one another um, so hopefully it will sort of facilitate that uh, discussion and connection between organizations that are doing the same same or similar work uh, around sort of a more diverse uh, geographical location and so this is just the last photo again I'm so sorry Gabby I forgot you were like in the beginning there but like this is just to show that like you know these things are great you like